Okay, we all back from the break. How was it? If you, if you give it one star, raise your hand. How about two stars? Any three stars? <laughs> and that's all I'm, that's, yeah, there's no four. There's no four. <laughs> so other than in giving stars to the API day's break, what else does Michelin have to do with APIs? Antonin's gonna come up and tell us more about it. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, hello everyone. I am Antonin Lamblay. I'm French, obviously. Um, I'm a consultant working at Michelin. So today, we will have a quick look on the Michelin API program, where we are and where we go. So, yeah, that's me. Uh, Movember. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what to say? Uh, that's been a long time I'm working in IT, and I started to work on APIs just one year ago with the Michelin API program. Um, that's what, this, what is interesting is that one year back, I was in, at your place in a seat looking at the conferences, and today I'm here, so I hope that this presentation will give you a few highlights on what's, how we manage uh, an API program in a manufacturing company. So, oh, yeah, I like cats. And this, what, this one is a bit particular because when we are looking at, uh, thinking at Michelin, we used to think about tires, we used to think maybe about maps, guides, but we don't much think about data and digital. The matter of fact is that Michelin started transformation and it is now a digital company. So believe it or not, cats, unicorn, exist. So Michelin landscape, yeah. What are we doing at Michelin? <laughs> we try to, and we do, tires for customers, which, exp which are a high level of quality, security, performance, and so on, customer expectations. We are also providing service and solutions for the company, fleet management company, you know, cars such as Hertz, tire as a service, and so on. Digital services, maps and guides, obviously. And uh, the last thing, less known, is that tires is a matter of expertise and a high level of technology within tires. So there are some, um, some uh, specialties here. And as I was saying just before, data are everywhere. So having a quick look on what exists in terms of digital services at Michelin and behind that, APIs. The first thing is Michelin Travel Partner. In fact, this is all the maps and the guides and the most famous guide is the red guy, which is just there. And as you can see here, this is a book, but now and since years, in fact, the data which are in this book are already available on the internet, through so websites and through APIs. Yeah, in fact, one week ago, TripAdvisor and Michelin had announced a partnership to share this information on TripAdvisor. Okay, what else? So yeah, we are looking to improve the driver experience. And Michelin is, emphasis is very, uh, how we can say that, uh, on the security, on the safety. So uh, there are some systems which are available for the end users to analyze the behavior when you are driving. And thanks to that, it analyzes the quality of the road and also it analyzes the usage of the vehicle. So here it collects data, 
anonymously. And it is, there are some capabilities to analyze that data and to, uh, and to uh, provide some in sync to the driver, to the uh, maintenance company on the road, you know, to uh, do the work on the road and uh, on, the, on the car also. So if you want to try it, this is free and this is already available. Behind that, APIs. Okay, last thing, Michelin Motorsports. So yeah, we are branding tires for competition. And uh, as you know that uh, on motorsports, the, the, there is a lot of parameters. The most common ones are the pressure of the tires, the temperature of the tires. So there are some systems which are already exist in the competition, which has been brewing to the end users, to the daily driver, the track driver, the one who has sports car going on track on the Sunday, to analyze their own tires. So this is IoT mainly, but behind that, APIs. All that initiative already exists at Michelin. So where is the API program here? In fact, we start to think about the way to manage all that APIs in a sustainable manner, having one goal, to leverage the value of that APIs and to manage it. So, yeah, uh, there are multiple streams on the program we have started two years ago, and let's have a brief look on that different streams. The first one is architecture. When I'm talking about architecture, I'm talking to full stack architecture because we are talking about APIs, but API is no more than a way to expose data. Behind that, there are backends. So when we are talking about architecture, about APIs, we need to think about end-to-end -end architecture. And guess what? There are a lot of systems, a lot of different IT technologies at Michelin some legacy, some very new technology, you know? So, in fact, this is not one architecture, this is multiple architecture we have to consider. Second thing is uh, API governance. So the point here is that when you have stocks of tires in multiple countries, and you want to bring that data to uh, uh, car manufacturers, let's say Mercedes, Renault, I don't know, Peugeot. This data needs to be equal in terms of the format, in terms of the consistency of the volume over the countries. And time to times, this is not the same backend behind. So that means, for the end user perspective, there is a work to do on the backend, on the data, to ensure that this is the same for everyone. Just an example on the API governance. There are multiple others. So operation, this is something which is also very important because API is a product. That means that at the end of the day, there will be users who are expecting services. And the services expected by the customer, the minimum level of service is 100% availability. This is API R for the time being at Michelin Sync API, you know? We are not working so far, from my, under, my knowledge, on asynchronous API. We are, we are using synchronous APIs. So, operation. We'll have a brief look on the operation just after. Evangelization. There were a lot of talk about evangelization today. So, yes, this is very important, the API culture. Within a group of more than 1,100, more 100,000 people, sorry. So, uh, and knowing that the API producers and the API consumers are everywhere. They are not only at IT, digital, they are uh, on research and development, they are everywhere. I used to say that APIs today is the uh, VB macro you use on Excel on the 10 years ago, you know? There are some kind of uh, very creative people doing APIs, but at the end, it has to be uh, reliable. So, yeah, operation, evangelization, exposure. An API is pointless is it not, if, if it's not used, so it has to be used, it has to be exposed, market, and so on. And development, this is very important because there is a lot of presentation related to API management, sure, it is a key, 
but it is also a key to integrate that API management stack within a full stack uh, chain for developers. I'm thinking about CI CD, Evergreen. So all that matters need to be considered and addressed. Okay? So how we do that? We need to manage all that at the same time. It's like the golf player, you know? If you want to uh, uh, do the right movement, he has to manage multiple parameters at the same time. Here on the program, if we want to succeed, we need to manage all that stream in sync, all together. And uh, to be sure that to go in the right way, we need to listen the voice of our customers. It's agile. So who are our customers? API producers, API consumers. Okay, so brief overview on architecture. Uh, yeah, so we are looking first to deliver fast and how to deliver fast working on our API management stack. We are chasing to enable SaaS capabilities. And uh, we know that we will also, we are needed also some on-premise API management capabilities. So we need to manage both. And uh, voila. <laughs> okay, next. Uh, Dev portal, yeah, Dev portal, yeah. the the marketplace of the APIs. So we are working on Dev portal. We are doing some mockup. It's fancy. It's nice. People, will, developers will be able to find what APIs are available, how to use it, how to test it, and so on. Good. Matter of fact is that Michelin Group is not only Michelin. Michelin Group is all that brands. Oh. How I will manage that? Is it uh, all that API portals I need to? Okay, we'll see. Let's start by one. Maybe we will make sense at the end. We don't know yet. Okay, API governance. Uh, when we are talking about APIs, in fact, we think, the market think that it could be divided in three. The foundational APIs, the one most technical to integrate systems together. The data, business data exposure, okay, basic data which can fit the business. Here there are some examples, stock, ordering, referential. Uh, there were some t discussion just before at Carrefour about duplication of referential. There is the same behavior at Michelin. I hope that API will help us to limit that. And the last thing is the choreography services. No more exposing data, it's exposing services, ordering, purchasing, billing, and so on. Oh yeah, just one thing. So there is an inner perspective and an outer perspective. Inner is for inner company, outer is open to partners, clients, and so on. Okay, operate, yeah, operation. So it's good to have APIs, it's good to have used APIs. It's better to have used APIs which are reliable. So, as I said, uh, this, is, this has to be considered at the beginning. And when we think about that, we thought that uh, maybe before putting guys supporting the systems, we can think about the resiliency of our systems using operation patterns, circuit breaker, and so on and uh, focusing on the full stack. It's not only an API management pattern, uh, matter, sorry. This is also back-end uh, matter. So it's a full chain to manage. Then we need to put an organization in place, and at the end, we need to iterate based on the experience, okay? So let's have a look on a simple API. So here, you got basic application, you got a federation application on Azure Kubernetes, then a few firewalls, and then the exposure on our Appium system. And here, you got all the teams which are involved. And as you can expect, uh, all that teams are not fully available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So yeah, resiliency first. Okay, evangelization. How we will manage to bring the API culture all over the group? So we have a plan, a roadmap of events, 
internal, external events. So for the business, for the IT digital team, and uh, having some external uh, talker, going to speaker, going to that, uh, that kind of event at Michelin, but also Michelin API team, which is just there, going in such kind of events in order for them to have idea of what is going on the market, what are doing others, and uh, that's it. So yeah, a bit of roadmap, just a very uh, high level roadmap here. Um, we start in 2018, just to make our mind on the, what's happened on the market. Then we move in 2019 on a global RFP for our API management solution at group level. And now we are enabling this API management solution. And uh, next year we will look for um, to uh, accelerate the usage of the methods and tools we are bringing to our consumers. We don't want to build APIs for people. We want to empower them. Okay, and uh, for what? In fact, the objective for us, the commitment to the steering committee, which is composed by the CIO and the CDO, the Chief uh, Digital Officer, is to, uh, is to have a transformation of the company by 2022. And voila, I'm done. That's great. All right, very good. Do we have questions for Antonin? Don't be shy. There we are. Thank you very much for your presentation. Very okay. nice. And I also like your logo. <laughs> Actually, 10 years back, I was similar to this creature. Now I'm slimmer. So, yeah, that's still personal binding. Actually, I'm coming from the banking industry. That I believe that, that we do struggle with something similar. That's why I would like to ask you about the standardization of this API. Yeah. I assume that Michelin is like a first company that actually is introducing that so in front of others. But it is very likely that you know, your competitors might start to do the same and then we are going to be overwhelmed uh, with all these APIs and perhaps there is no like, standardization. Or on the other hand, you know, these big car manufacturers might push you to actually do something you know, together uh, just not to, you know, be like uh, specific to to the to the Michelin or Continental or Pirelli or what have you. So, do you have this kind of uh, discussions with your competitors? And if yes, how how you facilitate that? That's what interests me. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your question. Uh, how I can answer to that? So, first, yes, there are some requests from Michelin customers to enable standard APIs. They do not want anymore to do standard integration, the one we used in the past, you remember, EDI, uh, FTP, flat file transfer, and so on. They want to use APIs. So yes, we have such kind of request, and this is the one goal we, reach by, we want to reach by the end of the year, is to be able to expose stock and other APIs to some uh, car manufacturer company. So related to standardization, in fact, so depends on the, the approach of the standardization. I come from IT, I come from IT, and uh, what I can say is that there is standards in terms of security, there is standards in terms of development, there is standards in terms of operation, and there might be standards in terms of data contents. So we start to define some of that standards on a technical perspective. And on a data management perspective, this is something which is in front of us. Voilà. Another question? Other questions, yeah. Looks like right there. Just on the uh, the API example that you showed with the complex uh, 
structure of the organization and the multiple teams and multiple backends. How do you, within Michelin, manage the accountability and ownership of that capability that you're exposing? And what has been the biggest challenge to try and streamline it so that you have a clear, let's say, value owner, but yet multiple teams, maybe even in different regions, with different budgets, even? Yeah. That's an excellent question. Um, I would say that first we need to we are currently looking for some of businesses at Michelin to elicitate the the opportunities of leveraging the data the, the, the value of the data. So we are not much at the accountability step. We are at the step to say, hey, look, your data might interest others. So let's make a digital case on that. Nevertheless, there are some uh, subsidiaries at Michelin which are now re enfin, API ready. I, I would say API native. I show DDI, you know, the car driving experience. I've shown MTP, uh, Michelin Travel Partner, Guides and Maps. So these people are already working on APIs on a daily basis. So the, the matter of fact is that this is really important to ensure that the data which is exposed is a product and it is managed accordingly. Um, I can't m much detail on this organization, but uh, what I can say is that uh, we are looking with them how to improve the operation. And knowing that, that means that, yes, the business is part of that challenge. Hello, uh, my question is a bit linked to the previous one. Um, you, you show that in the slide you have uh, internal and external API, kind of public and internal one. Um, do you have a different way of managing them in terms of exposure, because the consumers of those API uh, are not the same people. Internally, you will have more developers or other group in the same organization which will uh, need to work with those API and maybe the documentation is less uh, available as a public one and so on, but and the people accountable for the internal one and the, and the public one mm. should also communicate and have an agreement to, to make the product work. Yes, that's a good question. This is a challenge, in fact. Uh, not to segregate APIs. Uh, there are some APIs which are clearly for inner perspective and others for outer perspective. The standards in terms of security are quite the same. Uh, there is a question related to the confidentiality of the data, knowing that the people, the teams who want to, the businesses who want to expose their data needs to uh, ensure that it could be done for public exposure or there are or if there are some confidentialities, some limitation, meaning governance of the data. And there is also one thing I didn't talk about, and I've not much heard during the conferences, is that when you have internal APIs, you are looking for authentication based on your directories, internal directories. When you have external partners, you are looking to authenticate them with another directory. So here you fall into the, 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 the matter of the federation of identity. And this is a, a challenge we are currently digging into, you know, in order to, uh, to see how we can manage that. So I'm not sure I have fully an answer to your question, but uh, yeah, uh, there is a lot of question. And from my perspective, it's mostly on security and safety than on technical standards. We can discuss after if you agree. I will be pleased to exchange with you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome.